Alright, now the partition's finished, let's just fi do the final stages. It's asking me what my name is, so I'll just pop in my name. Okay, it's automatically chosen a username for us to log in with. Um, some of you may be used to using Windows PCs, for example, in an environment where there's more than one possible user to log in. Um, as Linux uh, historically has been part of a multi-user environment, this is also true with Linux. So um, it's important that you give it a username as well because you will log in every time you start up your PC, you'll log in with this username. So choose one that's appropriate for you and then choose a password which is uh, nice and safe, i.e. not the word password like what I'm doing right now. Okay, then the name of the computer, you can call it whatever you want, um, really it's up to you. Uh, something memorable is usually better. It, this is the name of it as it will appear on your network if you have one. <coughs> okay, uh, the final step on this one is whether you want to choose to log in automatically or not. Now, if you've got Windows XP Home or something like that at home, uh, you'll find that your PC generally just logs in automatically. It's not considered the most secure thing in the world to do because obviously, if, especially if you've got a laptop, um, if you have that laptop away um, and somebody picks it up, then they can just log straight into your computer, see all your files and, and so forth. So I would advise against using the login automatically option, but if you have it at home, you're the only person in your house and you want it for pure convenience, then you may consider that option. I'll click forward. Okay, uh, we're now ready to install. It's giving me a summary of all the things it's going to do. It's actually going to repartition the disk. It's going to uh, clear out some new partitions. It's going to set up with English, United Kingdom, my name, my username, and also my password. So I'll just click on the install button, and the partitioner will do its job to finalize the partitions on the disk as we said uh, to lay out earlier on. Uh, so that's 5050 Windows XP and Ubuntu on the disk and then um, it will install all of the Ubuntu system onto the hard disk. After that's done, that's probably around 15 to 30 minutes depending on the speed of your computer. You restart your computer and you've got the choice of whether you want to start Windows XP or your new operating system Ubuntu. Choose Ubuntu and you're straight into the Ubuntu system. It's as easy as that. So that's really it in a nutshell. That's all there is to do. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, stay tuned for more because the next tutorial that follows on straight from this one is the tutorial on how to actually use your Ubuntu system. We'll be going into all the sort of topics on how to use uh, the popular software which comes with the Ubuntu system straight out of the install. So for example, uh, if you're surfing the net, you can use the Firefox web browser, the uh, Mozilla Thunderbird um, email program, and of course the productivity software such as OpenOffice for writing your letters, doing your spreadsheets, doing your presentations with, all that sort of stuff. There's productivity software as well, graphics software, and many other things that come straight out of the box free with Ubuntu. But then I'll also show you a few other more advanced topics like how to get more software through the Synaptic Package Manager very easily, it's all free, and then what you can do is add things like Flash Player and so forth just to get these little things that you might be familiar with in Microsoft Windows land so that you're completely at, at home with your environment. Okay, so I'll show you that right after this presentation. Thanks for watching.